One of the craziest matches I ever had came when I was a blue belt. It went into double overtime, and it was an absolute back and forth slogging match. So during the match, it was with a buddy of mine, Joel Blanton. Joel, if you're watching this, we've laughed about this match plenty of times. And to tell you about how kind of nasty and competitive it got, at one point, I thought I was coming up with a takedown, and I thought Joel was fleeing the mat, so I smacked him in the face, and I tried to throw him into a score table. And he, in turn, turned around and took his man hand, because I'm 19 at this time, he's in his you know, mid-late 20s, he grabs me by my face and says, don't you smack me. And I remember being like, oh, shit, I, I probably shouldn't do that, right? It's a good lesson to learn as a young kid. So during the match, I couldn't take Joel down because he was a better wrestler than I was, and he really couldn't get any offense going on the bottom, or on the top, excuse me. And then when we were rolling, anytime one of us would score, the other one would immediately reverse and score back, and then we're back to square one. So it went, it went like this through the duration of the match. We go into overtime, and then we go to another overtime. And then the final overtime... I got taken down, Joel scored, and then right afterwards, I come up with a butterfly guard sweep to a single leg. I get the single leg, and I'm driving, we go out of bounds. The ref brings us back, puts us back into the single leg. I got seven seconds. We start going, and then we're hopping around, and Joel just smashes my face to the mat. He wins the match, done and done. I walk off the mat, I'm just exhausted. I take my gi off, I fall on the floor over on the side next to the mat, I'm breathing heavy. I had that deep like lung burning, right? Where your lungs are burning, you feel like you're tasting blood. My forearms, like the hands were like curled over and I felt like I couldn't use my hands at all. And I was cooked, you know? And I started to think, well, there's no gi coming up in maybe a couple hours, I'll get ready for that. A few minutes later, James Klingerman, the guy that runs the tournament, comes up to me and says, hey bro, you, you gotta go because Joel twisted his back or something during the match, so you're gonna take his place. And I remember looking at my teammate at this point going, fuck man are you serious like i've got to do this again I was like, oh. so you know put my gi back on got back on the mat so i step on the mat and i remember my my, my forearms are still like like i could barely open my hands still and i was still couldn't really could get a good breath and thinking to myself man i don't know how i'm going to continue this thing you know mentally my body was like dude you're done well i ended up winning that match and then three other matches following that and won my division. And there was another 24 minutes on the match because I didn't finish anyone. I, was, I didn't get any submissions that day. So it went the full duration of the six minutes. What I'm trying to illustrate to you guys is that a lot of times in jiu-jitsu, and you will have these moments many times, they're not, they, don't, they don't ever really go away, but you're gonna have these moments where like mentally, especially when you're tired, they're the, they're the most common. Mentally, you, your body starts to say, I'm done. Like, I'm just cooked. You know, the guy's passing your guard and you're, you're trying to fight and then you kind of just go, oh, fuck it, go ahead. You know, or the guy's on top of you and mount and you start to just, you, want, you, you don't want to be there anymore, so you like leave an arm out or you just let them get the submission. You don't really put up a fight. And I think, again, we've all been there at some point and you've got to have the presence of mind to tell yourself, no, 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 I'm not giving up yet and I'm going to continue to fight. I'm going to continue to go forward. The reason I bring this up is because a lot of times, People will ask me like Chewy, like uh, what's a good way to develop cardio or I need to improve my cardio. And if you're living a healthy lifestyle, if you're doing extra cardio on the side in addition to your training, you're going to develop that cardio over time. But one of the things that I think is really important for people is to really break through those mental barriers because typically there is a point where people think that that's it, right? They feel uncomfortable and they, they think that that's it, right? That's all I've got. You've got to press beyond that. So. To give you a quick tip, because obviously it's all about giving you something you can use, right? A quick tip that you can do to help facilitate this, right? To break through those mental barriers is to get yourself tired. Get yourself uncomfortable on the mat. Get yourself to the point where you want to give up and then consciously force yourself forward. A lot of times people, when they train, let's say your coach comes into the mat and says, hey guys, we're going to do eight rounds, six minutes. Most people will roll during those eight rounds as if there's another one coming and another one coming and another one coming till the end, right? They, they conserve a little bit of energy each time to get ready for the next match. And also with, if you have consistent training partners, a lot of times you get comfortable rhythms and patterns with them, right? And you just kind of fall into those. What I would ask you to do if you're trying to really break through and see what you can actually do with yourself and to not only push your cardio, but push your mental capacity to go forward is to roll as if there's one, right? So don't conserve energy, just push yourself. Throw everything you have into that first match, and then the second match, and then the third match, or whatever you know might be going on during your training session. And what's gonna happen is, is if you push yourself as hard as you can go, and you really go after it, 
This doesn't mean being a spaz either. This means just really going after it. What's going to happen is, is somewhere during those rounds, you're going to be pooped. You're going to be exhausted. You're going to be tired. And you're going to be sort of thinking to yourself, man, that seat over there on the wall looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just go sit out for a minute. Or you'll be, you know, getting smashed and you'll have that thought where, man, you know, maybe I'll just let him go and take the arm and, and I can tap and I'll be out of this uncomfortable position. And what you have to do is you have to have the conscious like presence of mind to say, no, 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 I'm not done yet. I'm going to keep fighting and really stick to your guns. And that's the hard part because it's very deliberate, right? There's no, it's not like rolling. Ro- regular rolling for the most part is just fun. You're just kind of moving through and it's, it's a good time. It's, it's like the dessert of training, right? It's just fun. But getting yourself into a really tough mental state and fighting through it, it requir- requires a lot of conscious effort. And that's tough. Guys, that's it. I'm done. Hope this helps. Leaving your gym is almost like, especially if you've been there for a while, it's like the divorce. You have all these memories and all these attachments to that place and to those people, and leaving is really, really difficult, even if it's the right thing to do.